My project started about three years ago. Uh, we called it Al Khawarizmi project because it seems that most of the West is familiar with the name Al Khawarizmi. And uh, try to find someone to work with in this project, and I will talk about it in just a little bit. And I was blessed to find Dr. Nuh who is, uh, has the same interest as mine. So I contacted him and uh, uh, we decided to move forward with this project. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I think our existence on this earth is to, as a Muslim, uh, is the total devotion and dedication to God Almighty. Whatever we do, whatever we say, and whatever we intend should be directed towards this goal. Kala Ta'ala Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati Lillahi Rabbil Alameen La sharika lah وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين. So therefore there has to be a Sharia, a law that regulates the rhythm of various activities, whether theoretical or scientific, applied or aspirational. For example. And I like Sister Bilkis. If you are in sports, you are living in this human society. It is required for such a person to be in harmony with the law of Sharia. And Sister Bilkis, I was very proud of her that she found that no matter how much pressure she had, finally she decided to do the right thing. Similarly, if you are a medical doctor, if you are an engineer, if you are a politician, and all who practice social and economical sciences, one is required to conform to Sharia, regardless of where such a person lives or practices in this human system. For example, Islam prohibit usury, which is riba. But Islam proposes a complete economical system in which zakah, alms, treasury, individual initiative, and voluntary work is available to all of us as Muslims. This created danger to the practice of usury in society which is, as we all know, usury is very harmful to society in general, and Islam protected the poor, needy, the underprivileged, and the forgotten citizen of society. And believe it or not, we have lots of them. In fact, there are laws in more than half of the uh, states of United States that prohibit or try to minimize usury. Yet, such a practice continues to rise. The Holy Quran depicted the relationship between nature and man. This inspired Muslim scholars to study natural phenomena in order to understand God Almighty. and to use nature for the benefit of human, all human kinds. The Islamic civilization contributed to the world, flourished in all aspects of life. Such contribution was rich and complex. Mathematics is searching for the truth, and Muslim scholars excelled in such an area. Scientific institution existed in many cities of the Islamic empire. One of them is the House of Wisdom. The first university was created by a female, which is, when you tell this to the West, they get a little bit, really? I thought the first 
university was created in Italy in 1200 AD. Muslim scholars during such, such period did research in all aspects of life. They did research in mathematics, physics, engineering, astronomy, optics, medicine, chemistry, architecture, just to mention a few. Islam offers the world an integrated moral and a humanitarian system that's good for the world's prosperity, the financial, economical, and psychological stability. This is why the legacy of the Islamic civilization was very massive. In my opinion, we are at the tip of the iceberg. There is so much knowledge to be discovered that this civilization gave to humankind. And they are either destroyed, they are sitting on shelves collecting dust that need to be discovered, or they are hidden. There must be a call for more discoveries and translation. Nine eleven. I think this is a very touchy subject. I still I remember the day when nine eleven happened. I was at a new at, at an institution in Wisconsin. The news came. Everyone they called us in at my institution, and the view of the West changed completely about us as Muslims. There is so much statistical data, and there is so much analysis. And one of the questions that I, I, I read before I came here is, how do you feel being a Muslim in the United States? Well, I am a US citizen. Why should I feel different? What my religion has to do with me as a US citizen of this country? 20 years later, Muslims doubled in population. In the USA, we are now approximately 1% of the total population of the USA. Mosques actually doubled in the USA. In 2000, we had approximately 1,209 mosques. Now we have 2,769 mosques in 2020. Muslims in Congress prior to 2007, zero. But then I found this. This is the new Congress. And how many Muslims are there? Three. Less than six. One six percent. One six of a percent of the U.S. Congress. And according to some of the news, Muslims took over Congress. Three. And Muslims took over Congress. And this is a list. We have 33 Jewish. We have Christians. For me, does it make a difference whether you are a Christian, a Muslim, a Jewish, a Hindu? If you get into this type of work, you have to follow the laws of United States. Your religion is a private religion. Let me give you some quotes. In 1765, Thomas Jefferson owned the translated copy of the Holy Quran. I am not a lawyer. I'm not, I do not have any background in, 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 in uh, uh, constitution law. But if you look at the United States Constitution, I guarantee you, you will find many examples that was borrowed of the Islamic religion. In 1993, Charles III, King of England now, he said, we need to remember that we in the West are in debt to the scholars of Islam, for it was thanks to them that during the dark ages of Europe, 
the treasures of a classical teaching were kept alive. Anyone who doubts the contribution of Islam and Muslims to Europe Renaissance should, as an exercise, try to do some simple arithmetic using Roman numerals. In 2010, President Obama, because the United States was behind, uh, Russians were going, I think they were using Russia to go to space, so they were behind, so President Obama decided that let's take the initiative, and I think uh, Charles Bolden was uh, appointed to be the NASA administrator. Obama charged him with three things. Number one, his, he wanted to help re-inspire children to get into science and math. And number two, he wanted me to expand the international relationship. And number three, what caught my eye, reach to the Arab world. I think our speaker before me was speaking about astronomy. And the Muslims are well known for understanding this. But what caught my eye is what I put in quotation, let them feel good about themselves. And that caught my eye. What do, what, what do they mean by let them feel good about their historic contribution to science, math, and engineering? And believe it or not, I think one uh, from the Washington Post answered Obama when he was speaking about reaching to the Muslim world. He said nothing good ever came from the Muslim world. And that is what the West think of us all the time. So what is our image in the USA? And I am sorry that the font is extremely small. It's always constant, less than 40%. And I am not sure in what sense that 40% is. What do they mean by positivity? that we are 40% good and 60% think of us as, uh, let me put it in plain English, evil. There are some factors. This is our own making. We now live in the dark ages. I am Palestinian and I will talk a little bit about Palestine in just a little bit, but I think we live in the dark ages. We haven't defined what our purpose is. And we constantly being lectured by some kind of Western ideology and forced to accept false narratives. And we are so afraid to challenge that ideology and false narrative. The truth can never hurt anyone. Lack of a true understanding of Islam by the West. I have been in academia since 1993. And when 2011 happened, I was shocked and surprised how people in academia are speaking about Islam and they have no idea what Islam is all about. Nothing. Let me give you an example, and I'm going to use my friend Nuh. Couple of females, and they concentrate too much about females. Females in Islam are second-class citizens. No, they are not. We gave them rights way early. The West gave them rights in 1923. So a group of females, they were giving a lecture like this, and they went to Turkey, and they said, well, every morning around 10 o'clock, we will drive to such and such university and the men are sitting, drinking coffee or tea and the females are working in the fields. 
I raised my hand. I said, did you ever drive before 10 o'clock in the morning? No. Well, how do you know that the men did not do the work after Salat al-Fajr and now the females are just picking up certain pieces? So generalization, generalization, generalization. And believe it or not, we as Muslims have lack of understanding of our true religion. So it's a two-way, the West and us, that we need to be educated to understand true Islam. As Muslims in the U.S. and Muslims in the world and everywhere else, we need to do our part. No one is going to do it for us. It starts at the home. I think the way we raise our kids is extremely important, whether they go to Islamic schools or not. We can send our kids to public schools. But if the foundation is correct, our children will be able to survive the environment that they are in. Second is schools. And as all of you know, there is a movement right now that is extremely dangerous in the U.S. and not just in the U.S. It is all over the globe. I am Palestinian. I was in Palestine in December. I went to the Ministry of Education and in plain English they told me Europe give us a lot of money, the West give us a lot of money, but in return they are demanding certain curriculum because you can change the mind of a child, you cannot change the mind of someone who is 20 years old. And they are working very hard to change the minds of young kids in certain parts of the world. So for us, we have, if, we, if the home is correct and we are careful with the schools, I think our children will be, they will be able to survive in the United States and in Europe and elsewhere. As a professor, and I will speak about my, what I did uh, uh, so far, at your institution, reach out. I mean, offer classes about Islam. The good thing about United States and academia is you propose something, they are always hungry for diversity. They are always hungry for something in you. And I will give you a couple of examples in just a little bit. Professionals the same way. I mean, we have a lot of doctors in here and I'm glad that I see some uh, 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 in hospitals, they know that you are a Muslim, and so on. Uh, that is very, very encouraging and very positive. University students, through university government. I mean, they, you are representing the Muslim com community, whether you, from United States or globally. As a student, you should be a model to Islam, to give a positive image about Islam in your university and leaders of the community as well. So although images of Muslims increased in the media, in news, shows, now we can see they have, for example, females with hijab and many shows, they have males. I am not sure if it's positive or negative. I'm not going to comment on this. Uh, but Islamophobia is actually on the increase. So yes, they talk a lot about Islam and Muslims, but Islamophobia is actually on the increase. Research on the contribution of the Islamic civilization uh, has been on the rise since the early 1900. Many Arab countries became independent after the British and the French colonization. And, but, that research is contained in certain circles of academia and not to the general public. And the last thing is the failure of the West to identify the root cause of the problem. Their historical narr narrative, their propaganda, and their continuous propaganda that dehumanize Islam and Muslims. And we really, uh, there has to be a call to change uh, 
uh, in that direction. So what is our responsibility as an ummah? I mean, the first thing is we have to be truthful about who we are, truthful behavior. Whether you are an individual or whether you are a leader. I put a small comment here. The corrupt of the ruler stems from the corruption of the governed. You cannot complain about a corrupt ruler. It stems from the corrupt of the governed. As an example, the Palestinian issue. And I was talking to some of my colleagues this morning and, and yesterday. In the late 1800, Herzl came to Sultan Abdul Hamid of Turkey, the Uthman Empire, and said, we want to buy Palestine. I'm going to give you $200 million in gold to help you with your economical problem. Sultan Abdul Hamid said, Palestine is an Islamic issue. It's not an Uthman Empire issue. After that, you know what happened to Sultan Abdul Hamid. Early 1900, the Palestinian issue became an Arab issue. Look what happened now. Right now, the Palestinian issue is a Palestinian issue. And you know what we are negotiating? We are negotiating at 4%, 4 of natural Palestine. In other words, Israel took 96% of Palestine and we are negotiating at 4%. Truth about education, and I am very, very, really, I'm very impressed with the Islamic Center here. I am very impressed with all females and males and young kids because we need to invest in education. I think education is the way out. We need to be proud of our past. I can tell you, uh, just as a side note, I am a fly fisherman. I like to fly fish. And tomorrow I will be fly, fly fishing the Smoky Mountains. A colleague of mine, who's a lawyer from King and Spartan from Atlanta, uh, during COVID, we were talking and he said, Nasser, you want to help your people create a non-profit organization. That is the only way. So his law firm did all the work for free. And he's a Christian. He's not a Muslim. He's a Christian. They did all the work for free. They submitted the paperwork to South Carolina. It was approved. I filled the paperwork to become 501c3. It was approved. And after that, I said, well, what can I do with this foundation at my college? I created a course called an inquiry course, which is called Islamic Giving. And it's been a very, very successful course. It's outside of mathematics. I talk about Islamic giving. Uh, So our students can actually, who are all Christians, can actually understand what we do in Islam. So what is our responsibility? That is our responsibility. The Bath to Al-Khawarizm project, some background, uh, up to 2000, I finished my PhD in harmonica analysis. All what, in, what I knew are the names of uh, European mathematicians, Gauss, uh, Basson, de Richelieu, and so on. In 2004, I attended a talk. I was part of a project next through the Mathematical Association of America. And a friend of mine gave a talk about Al-Samwal. 
And during his talk, most of the time he concentrated on Al Samwal was a Jewish. I think he mentioned it about six times. So I approached him after the talk and I said, Ben, why are you concentrating about Al Samwal being a Jewish? Al Samwal, yes, his father is Jewish, but he converted to Islam. And he said, well, Jewish people are very smart and they can be able to, they are very, very creative. So implicitly, we as Arab cannot be creative. And the theme in conferences continues. I think Dr. Nuhi mentioned this. Greek, modern Europe, Greek, Renaissance, nothing in between. They do not even acknowledge that a Muslim empire existed during that time. Yes, they might give us a credit that we translated some books. And like I'm going to use the same quote as Nuh uh, used, that we had this big refrigerator that we kept it there until modern Europe. And we said, welcome, here it is. And now the revolution started. So in 2012, I became the chair of the math. I accepted the position as a chair of the mathematics department at the Newberry College. And I decided, what can I do? I created two math courses, 481 and 482. 481 is a junior capstone. 482 is a senior capstone. 481, you study the literature about Muslims and their contribution to mathematics. And 482, you try to write an expository paper or a poster that you present at a conference. And it's been very, very successful. Students presented at conferences or in a poster session. And uh, students of the Deep South, I mean, Tennessee is not the Deep South. Come to South Carolina, it is the Deep South. Became familiar with names. And the list goes on and on and on, and in all aspects of life. I think we have more than 135 mathematicians who worked on mathematics, and at the same time, they worked on other aspects. So we have a rich history of research during the Islamic empire. They did work in geometry. They did work uh, algebra through calculus, number theory, algorithm, optics, chemistry, astronomy, philosophy, and the list goes on and on and on. In my opinion, modern Europe existed because of the work of the Muslims. In 2023, I became a uh, a historian of the Mathematical Association of America, the Southeastern section. Uh, last spring, I organized a session about the history and philosophy of mathematics. And believe it or not, it was the same thing. We had about eight speakers, Greek to modern Europe, nothing in between. So I decided in 2020 to create uh, a project, contacted my colleague Noah, I found him and we discussed and we worked with the Mathematical Association of America. And the project has two components. The first component is actually undergraduate research through the whole USA. Students can do research on a particular topic, which is the contribution of Muslims during uh, 8th to 16th century. And the second component, which is, I think is very, very important, is to create a clearinghouse that actually contains material for uh, possible high school, middle school to adopt as a course or a supplement to uh, their math class to introduce mathematics in their 
curriculum. Future vision of this project, component one, uh, I am hoping and hopefully uh, my colleague Nuh will agree with me. I just cannot see that much. When you get older, I think your eyes get a little bit strained. Expand to universities outside of the USA. Call for the continuation of discovery of work. I mean, 800 years of discovery. Uh, you cannot put it in a lecture. You cannot put it in a book. There is massive information that I believe still exists, whether it's in Turkey, in Egypt, in Alabo, Syria, uh, in some, in a lot of libraries of the West that uh, contains a lot of material that's waiting to be discovered and translated. Uh, some of the dilemmas, as I mentioned, the Muslim world is undeveloped. Those Muslim countries that they can afford it, they really do not have no interest in that direction. The West, they do have massive resources, but they are not willing yet to say that we want to rewrite the global history of science. So a call for change of current Western narrative in published books is needed. As for the second component, which requires a lot of devotion and funding, we need to create a curriculum for teachers to adopt. And we are working on this. I think there is a lot of material out there that we will be able to use, to create what we call, which is I will mention just a little bit, the curriculum for teachers to adopt. And we need to start with the Islamic schools. This is why, this is why I am here. Just give me two minutes. This is why I'm here. I'm trying to sell this to the Islamic Center in South Carolina, uh, in, 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 in uh, Memphis. Because if we want to sell this project to the West, they're going to ask us, which is they already asked, why don't you start with your own? Islamic schools. So if we start as a pilot program in the Islamic schools, then I am hoping if we have another conference next year here to offer a professional development for future teachers. Talk to them during this year. If they are interested in that direction, teaching a course about whether mathematics, medicine, uh, 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 whatever it is about the Islamic Empire, we can offer them professional development, train them how to teach, provided that they will go back to their schools and offer that course in 2025 next year. And then, once we show success in our Islamic schools, we can expand to the public schools, and believe it or not, I'm excited about this, expand it to the Muslim countries. You will be surprised that we do not teach the, this in actually our own countries. So show success in the West, then move, and hopefully the Muslim countries will follow. I thank you very much. I have my contact information. And if you have any question, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you.